warm welcome to this special episode of ET Government's Public Sector Leadership Series. My name is Anup Verma. Today, our guest for this special episode is Professor Pankaj Arora. He is serving as the chairperson of the National Council for Teacher Education, NCTE. NCTE is a statutory body of the Ministry of Education, Government of India, set up to formally oversee standards, norms, procedures, and processes for education of teachers in the country. Its core objective is to achieve planned and coordinated development of the teacher education system. The topic of my conversation with uh, Professor Arora is the state of the education of teachers in the country. The teachers shoulder the heavy burden of educating the young generation for the future, future of this country. Their own education and skill development is of utmost importance for achieving the vision of Vixit Bharat by 2047. Professor Arora has been a professor of education in the Department of Education for 27 years. He is the author of several articles, such papers, and nine books, including two books on NEP, two edited books on NEP 2020. Welcome, Professor Arora. Namaskar. Thank you. Namaskar, sir. Uh, my first question is, recently, NCTE has mandated all teacher education institutions to submit performance appraisal reports for 2021-22 and 2022-23 by November 10. Do you think that this directive will ensure more accountability on the part of the recognized institutions that are involved in teacher training? Uh, yes, of course, uh, because uh, you might be aware that uh, NCT gave recognition, uh, one-time recognition to teacher education institutions. And after this one-time recognition, if we need to keep checking the considerations of quality, whether teacher education institutions are continuing with those parameters or not, then we have another powerful tool provided to us by the ordinance, by the act of uh, NCT. And that, act, uh, that provision is PAR, Performance Appraisal Review, which is to be done every year. Since we have not done it for last two years, one because of the COVID and another because of some technical and administrative reasons. So this year we have come out with PAR um, provision for the year 21-22 as well as 22-23. This important and powerful tool will surely help us maintaining the academic standards and norms as per the concerned regulation in all the teacher education institutions across the country. Because now, uh, earlier when we did uh, this uh, uh, inspection and recognition of these institutions, uh, those are uh, the years when uh, technology was not there. Uh, offline inspection was taking place. Now online uh, provisions are there. And when institutions will be filling this PAR application online, then they will be uploading live photographs of their labs, their building, their infrastructure, faculty members' details with PAN card number details. And similarly, the geotag-based information need to be there. And that entire thing would help us to ensuring that actually these teacher education institutions do exist in the field. And they are supposed to bring a certificate from the affiliating university as well. Uh, where affiliating university will be declaring that the institution is being run as per norms and standards of NCT provided for the purpose. So this way, PAR is an important and powerful tool to curb down the malpractices or the substandard institutions in teacher education. Uh, you talked about digital technologies uh, which have become available now. So uh, NCT is covering teacher education in uh, programs like Diploma in Elementary Education, Bachelor of Education, Master of Education. So how are these uh, educational programs being impacted by the uh, digital technologies? And how are you ensuring that uh, the teachers actually get trained in these technologies so that they can impart the same training to the, their students? Yes. Uh, since... Uh... Uh, NEP 2020 has been brought to place in the year in July 2020 itself. Since then, our important concern was, even the policy's concern was to equip and enable the teachers to meet the challenges of 21st century. And among those challenges, one important paramount challenge is about technology. 
policy has mandated that teachers should also be equipped with the tools of technology, um, online classes, digital mode, hybrid mode classes, as well as digital lessons and digital learning materials should be provided to students. So to understand the challenge of this digital world, NCT is committed to empower its teachers, current teachers across the country to come up to the expectations of 21st century. And with that purpose only, we are bringing, we are upgrading over all curriculums in the light of NEP 2020. For example, a new program of teacher education, four-year ITEP has already been brought in place. We are digital education um, um, and technology-based uh, education is a compulsory part for all the teachers at all the stages of school education, be it for foundation stage or middle stage or preparatory stage or secondary stage. For all the teachers, technology in education is an important area which is compulsory and another domain to take it forward, a digital education, an elective option has also been given to the students who are more comfortable in the field of technology. And technology-based pedagogies, we are also working on that. And across the country, multiple teacher education institutions are doing research in this, how teachers can be empowered. Open pedagogy, public pedagogy, which are totally technology-based, are being in discussion. And uh, we think that these new programs and upgraded programs in the light of NDP 2020 will be able to address the needs of teachers for 21st century based on technology and digital world. Uh, you mentioned uh, National Education Policy 2020, which is probably the biggest education reform uh, in the last 20, 25 years. So um, this suggests a new kind of capacity building in the teachers. You already talked about uh, some aspects of it, but what other steps are, is NCT taking to fulfill the vision of any 2020? Uh, if you go through the uh, program, which has already been in place since 2023, uh, ITEP, which I mentioned earlier also. In ITEP program, we have taken special attention to the aspect that teachers are not only being prepared for 21st century, but also be educated about Indian ethos, Indian value system, Indian knowledge system, as well as Indian constitutional aspects and citizenship aspect. And all these important areas are also being uh, placed in teacher education program. I am very confident and convinced that unless teachers themselves are equipped, knowledgeable, have faith in Indian ethos and Indian knowledge system. Only then they can pass on this important information to the next generation. And through uh, next generation only, we can help our young generation, our children to understand that how rich Indian ethos was, how rich Indian culture was, how scientific Indian knowledge system is. And that is the tool which can help us reaching out to the youngsters this has already been incorporated in the ITEP program. And now we are working on revision of B8 one year, B8 two year, MED program. Um, all these programs are under revision at NCT. And we are making sure that all these considerations should be given due importance and space while we are developing uh, these programs, revising these programs in the light of NDP 2020. Okay, uh, what is the nature and the scope of the revisions that you are making in BA and uh, other courses that you mentioned? And uh, what is the timeline uh, by which you uh, expect to come, come up with the proposals? Uh, scope is, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the scope is a reference of NDP 2020. So these programs are being revised in the light of NDP 2020 to accommodate the expectations and to give space to these ideas of NEP 2020 into teacher education programs at all the levels, be it school education, foundation stage, or preparatory stage or elementary, um, um, middle stage or secondary stage, all four stages. Um, these programs, uh, be it one year, be it two year, uh, ITAP four years, Sanskrit education, yoga education, physical education, as well as art education. Okay. These six programs are in um, already being 
committees have been constituted around two years back, one and a half years back. And now the committees are at the verge of submitting their final suggestions um, within the next couple of months. And uh, at NCT, we are trying our best to open, uh, to launch these programs from the academic year 2025. In partnership with CBSE, NCTE recently organized a teacher eligibility test to discuss the transformative changes that are required in light of NEP 2020. So what is the nature and the scope of these transformative changes and how are you planning to implement these changes? Uh, we are calling them transformative because uh, they, uh, if uh, a teacher has acquired a teacher education degree from any institution in the country, to uphold the standards of teacher education, TET has been introduced after RTE 2009. And since then, TET teachers eligibility test being conducted at central level by CBSC and at state level by the state governments. This TET is also now being redefined to meet the expectations of policy. Now this TET is uh, at NCT, we are reviewing our own policy of having TET at two levels because earlier it was at two levels. So no final decision has been taken, but this is under consideration because now school education has been redefined into four stages. So do we need to prepare teachers for all four stages and we need to conduct TET for them at all four stages or at three stages? These all are the consideration which we are discussing at NCT with the subject experts, with the experts of education. And these TET will be, as you yourself has asked in the first question, how this pedagogy, how this technology is going to impact teacher education. So in TET also, we are having these four components. One is pedagogy, other is school subject knowledge, four stages consideration, as well as competencies of uh, assessment of competencies, assessment evaluation of competencies, which is there as a new model of evaluation for school students as well. So all these areas will be now given due space in TET. You earlier mentioned yoga and other aspects of Indian culture that, that teachers should be trained in. Now, NEP also has the vision of educating the students as well as the teachers in Indian values and ethos. So uh, yoga and uh, other things are part of that. So uh, they, they, the teachers would have a critical role to play in training the uh, students in these uh, aspects of our past culture. So how are you planning to train the teachers in the area of Indian values and ethos? If you have gone through, or the viewers have gone through the ITAP curriculum structure, there we have introduced a paper called Evolution of Indian Education. So how Indian education has evolved in last 2000 years or even more than that. Okay. How uh, assessment and evaluation is being redefined in the context of policy. How inclusive education is not only a mandate of policy, but a guiding principle for Indian society and policy and uh, teacher education need to accommodate this important aspect as well. In context of yoga, we are coming with yoga and inner peace, which is again an ability enhancement course where yoga and understanding self is a compulsory part of teacher education program. Understanding India, where Indian ethos and Indian knowledge system is being discussed, again has been accommodated as important aspect, important compulsory aspect of teacher education. And one big challenge, which has person of political science education, I have been realizing for the last 25 years that we need to promote citizenship education. We are the largest democracy in the world. And uh, unfortunately, we do not have any formal system to prepare our citizens who are not only aware about their rights and duties, but also very sensitive to the ethos of India, must be appreciating constitutional values as well as they should be um, they should be committed to the nation instead of uh, any other uh, context whether it's ideology or um, region for that purpose the nation should be first so with that understanding citizenship education with the idea of sustainability and environment education 
has also been brought into place. So these are some important aspects, some important areas where we are trying to accommodate policies mandate as well as vision for 21st century. And by the year 2047, if we want to see India as a developed country, Viksit Bharat, then we need to prepare citizens who are not only aware about their rights and duties, but also committed and accountable to the nation. That idea is there. So with that idea, this new teacher education program has been prepared. Uh, India is often called an argumentative nation because we have long tradition of probably going back to thousands of years of uh, arguing, settling disputes or uh, differences of opinion by having a debate or discussion. So, I mean, teachers being intellectuals, everyone would have their own view on how the cultural aspects have to be taught or uh, transmitted to the students. So, um, along with making policies that this should be there, are you also conducting seminars and one-to-one -one interactions with the teachers and uh, group discussions to uh, convince them that this is the right way? And uh, are you uh, getting sufficient amount of support from the teachers? Yes, Anupji. Uh, India is a large nation with multiple diversity. And this diversity is not a challenge, but a strength of a country like India. And when we say we believe in discussing, we believe in argumenting, we believe in challenging other ideas, I think that is the beauty of Indian democracy, which allow us to have divergent ideas about same object, same idea, about the same concept. Uh, teachers uh, in pedagogies, we have an important uh, Plato's idea-based pedagogy, uh, which is called dialogue-based pedagogy, discussion-based pedagogy, where two people discuss one idea and sometimes they reach some consensus and sometimes they do not reach consensus. And there we educate, we uh, as one of the pedagogical tools, we help them understand that living with differences is also an option. It is not that you cannot live with differences. If we are discussing something, debating something, and we could cannot emerge at some consensus, then let us agree to remain disagree. That's also an important and beautiful principle of democracy. So uh, when I said citizenship education, I meant that citizen should be aware about constitutional values, about constitutional provisions of discussing and holding difference of opinion and living with those differences can also be one option, in, uh, which is a democratic option instead of getting into uh, imposing one's idea on others or getting into violent modes. So that citizenship education is promoting, uh, having discussions, debates, and then concluding either on consensus or let us go with the differences. India is a very youthful nation. So the I mean, training of teachers is very important. Oh, for uh, I mean, achieving the goals of Vixit Bharat, as you rightly pointed out. So, uh, should there be some uh, reforms in the uh, education system to give more powers to NCT so that they can, uh, I mean, uh, uh, take more bolder initiatives for uh, training the teachers for the times to come for 2030 and 2047 in mind? Education policy 2020 has proposed a whole new regulatory system for higher education in the name of Higher Education Commission for India, HECI, which is popularly known as. And in HECI, uh, we see NCT as one of the PSSB, as one of the professional standard setting body. And policy has given full autonomy to all the PSSBs, not only to NCT, but all the PSSBs to set their academic standards, to have their own norms and standards which they expect to be followed by teacher education institutions, not only in infrastructure, but also in curriculum. So that way, uh, we are an autonomous body. Uh, we are, uh, since our inception, we are an autonomous body. And as autonomous body, uh, we keep doing experiments. Uh, we have a provision of innovative programs as well. And under innovative programs, we invite applications from across the country about innovations in teacher education. And that bracket, that window give us opportunity to keep inviting new ideas, to keep inviting critical ideas, to keep inviting new experiments, which are happening at small scale, micro level 
in the country to be formally acknowledged by NCT. And if we find success in those pilot projects, in those innovative programs, then the strength can be transferred into more uh, mainstream programs of the teacher education. So that way, I think uh, NCT has always been autonomous. Policy has also given us that autonomy, even if we are converted into a PSSB. And third point, as I suggested, this innovative window gives us multiple scope to go for experimentation into teacher education. In one of your articles, you have said that for India to truly become a Vishwa Guru, it must invest in its teachers to serve as architects of the nation's future through their unwavering dedication. This is a very good sentiment uh, in relation to the uh, kind of role that the teachers are expected to play in the country. But what kind of investments in teachers do you think is required? And um, are we geared to make uh, that kind of investment? Uh, yes, Anupji. When we talk of investment, uh, one common answer is financial investment. Financial. But I'm not talking of only financial investment. I am talking of academic investment. As a teacher educator, I believe that teachers should be empowered to uh, deal with their students in their own way, not only in context of pedagogy or experimentation, but also in context of developing and contextualizing their content in the classroom situation. If a teacher is supposed to, teacher must have liberty to uh, try out new uh, upcoming areas as formal areas of education. Teachers should be given autonomy to do assessment of students' competencies because one model fits all is, is not working. For many years, we have observed this not only in India, but across the world. So now it's time when you should decentralize things. And policy is also proposing to give autonomy to the institutions to the teachers as well as to the students. So teachers' autonomy should be enjoyed by them in all academic domain, whether it's curriculum developments, developing some specializations which are relevant for one context, maybe relevant in tribal India, not in urban India, that sort of autonomy should be given. And then assessment and evaluation examination is solution. So to assess I should be allowed to evolve new tools and that autonomy, I mean, uh, that investment means allow them to do this and see is working on this to make sure that teachers are empowered to deal with different and challenging situations of the ground level. Thank you, Professor Pangajarora. It was very nice talking to you and uh, I wish you best of luck for uh, training the teachers in the country. This is, this is a very important job. And if NCT succeeds and the way uh, in implementing all that vision that you have given, then we might certainly be on way to achieving the goals of Exit Bharat by 2047. I am very confident that we will achieve that. Thank you very much. Thank Namaskar. You. Thank you.